Hey everybody, I'm Susie and this is Susie Stuff. Today I put together a large compilation of 15 DIYs and hacks and I hope it gets you in the mood for spring and Easter is even early this year, March 31st. One little point of interest, these clips are out of order so disregard any number sequence, grab some popcorn, sit back and relax and let's get started right now. Come on! Starting out with a quick and easy decor piece, grab a Dollar Tree vase, some Dollar Tree carrots, some Dollar Tree moss, and go. Just start throwing them all in your vase, making sure the carrots are more on the outer part, adding your moss in between. The vase that I'm using is an older one um, that I had that has a lid on it. Uh, you don't need that if you don't want to use it. I'm, I'm thinking making one or two or three of these. And uh, I think I used about two packets of carrots on this big one, but it's so easy to put together. I mean, how simple is that? And yet it screams spring. Here we go, love it. Number four DIY is one of my favorites too, and it is using this crazy cocoa liner from Dollar Tree. I'm guessing this is made out of coconut hairs and they smash it together, who knows? It really makes a great plant liner too, and I'll show you that in just a little while. I'm gonna use some of this off-white paint, and of course, uh, choose the color of your liking, and I will use these round sponge brushes from Dollar Tree to add some polka dots to this liner. I'm gonna use the small, medium, and large sponges. And while this one is drying, I'm wondering, can you guess what I'm making? Yes, of course, some mushrooms. This is gonna be a bigger one, but now I'm gonna make some small ones that I think are so charming and so budget friendly. These are some brand new baskets that they have out in the summer nautical decor at Dollar Tree, and um, I just grabbed them right up. I just thought they were so, so cute. I also grabbed those vases right there from Dollar Tree and some pebbles, and look at this. How cute is this? Look, it makes a little mini mushroom. I was so happy to create this. And I'm just gonna use a little bit of hot glue on the top there so later I can just pull off the basket um, and use it uh, around the house if I want to. But these are so charming. Oh, I love them and they are gonna look so great on my table. Now, I did add the pebbles, but you could add anything you like. Um, some colored, uh, those uh, the glass there, those glass pebbles. But what am I gonna use for this one? I grabbed a uh, round vase at Dollar Tree and some pebbles and rocks. And like I said, you can use some other colors too that I think would be great. But I kind of wanted to keep this neutral. And so I used these black pebbles. I think they're river rocks or something. I think they're all river rocks. Um, but I'm just gonna add that sort of in there and make a little pattern. And while I'm doing that, um, just let me know down below if you're having some fun and just let me know what you think about everything. So this liner is quite big and it just didn't look good on that short thing. So I am gonna raise it up a little bit by grabbing these two packs which is four of these round styrofoam pieces. And I just hot glued them on the top of the vase and that raised it up perfectly and gave it the, the best height for this big mushroom. Ta-da! I just think it turned out adorable. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to give these away for some gifts um, that I know uh, will be perfect on everybody's backyard uh, table, patio table. And let me tell you, it poured rain last night and one of them I had put on another table and right there, and you could see the leaves in the background. We had a huge hailstorm yesterday. <laughs> 
<laughs> and these got caught in the rain and they absolutely took it perfectly and the basket's already dry now. So um, I think these were great outside and maybe if you want to keep them forever, which I think I may do, you could add some E6000 to the top there and that would really hold it on even more. So I love how this turned out. It looks great with my garden, my garden vase. And I am so pleased with my mushrooms. Yay! I love this next spring hack. I am starting out with a crumpled piece of brown wrapping paper, a very pretty and durable frame from Walmart. Most of the time they're about $4, but the star of this project is the chicken wire. And here's how I put it together. You can use any uh, anything for your background. I just loved this crumpled uh, piece of wrapping paper. It just looks really rustic and cool. But like I said, you can use anything. And then you're just gonna take the uh, chicken wire, be careful, and kind of bend it around your glass. And I am using the all durable, all favorite duct tape. When you do this, it does make it rather thick. So when you put it back in the frame, it's not gonna fit perfectly, but grab your duct tape again and it will help keep it in there just perfectly. So now your base is ready to go. And I love this part. You can just, just easily uh, put in some beautiful spring flowers from Dollar Tree or any florals picks that you have from Walmart. I just love that. You just slide them right in. No glue, no paint on this project. Love it. And I love these little wispy yellow flowers. I also added some sunflowers so you can change it up a little bit uh, as the seasons go by. And I just had to make a little bow, just a little burlap bow. That's some ribbon from Dollar Tree. Just stuck it right in there. You don't have to do that, or you could use a colorful one, however you want to do it. But here's how it turned out. Gorgeous, beautiful, and simple for spring. For number three's patio hack, I'm taking these new galvanized pieces that Dollar Tree has now, and they come in the, in the birds, a potted plant, and also a watering can. All I'm gonna do is take a Phillips head screwdriver and a hammer to create a couple of holes that I need. And I'm using this piece of wood to help me out. I also want to bend down any sharp edges by squishing it down with my pliers there and then kind of hammering it out. Now it's all smooth. To add some color to it, I thought I would use my leftover Easter beads. Um, they come in all these like pastel colors and uh, or you could use some natural wood beads. Those would look nice or none at all, whatever you like. I just picked out the colors I liked and added those in. This potted plant hanger has two holes in it and um, you can see how I did that there. Just kind of put that in there and pulled it through. And then the bottom one only has one hole. So I added more beads there in a random pattern, just wherever your creativity leads you. No right or wrong, but I did add a thicker piece of twine. Mm -hmm. 
And the last thing I'm going to add to this is some Dollar Tree fabric. I love their fabric pieces now and they are coming out with all kinds of great colors and patterns. And I'm just taking the fabric and I tear it apart and I'm going to add it to the top of this darling hanger. I love that chartreuse color. And that's really all there is to it. How beautiful are those colors? I just need a little hook and I got these metal garden hooks at Dollar Tree. You get two in there for $1.25. Works perfectly on your patio umbrella. Just hook it in there and hang it and you are ready to enjoy a wonderful cold glass of tea and enjoy this beautiful hanging piece. I love it. I love the beads and I love that fabric. And I'm just wondering how yours will turn out. It's just blowing in the wind. I found this fabric at Dollar Tree as well. It was kind of some orange polka dots. And this little sign, I think you can always find that at Dollar Tree. What I did first though is paint it white because sometimes when you use fabric um, on a piece like that, the the stuff underneath will show through the fabric. So I just did a quick coat of white paint on the little board that came inside the frame, and then I Mod Podge the fabric right on that board. I am loving these new wooden signs. Oh. And I also love that they don't have a hole in them, so you have to fill in the hole. It was uh, connected in the back there. So what I wanna do with this is I'm taking my antique wax in Waverly, or Waverly in antique wax, <laughs> and I do that and I wipe it off. And so for the little watering can and the flower, or the, the bird, I'm using some moss uh, Waverly chalk paint, and I'm just gonna uh, paint those a couple of coats. You need a little teeny tiny brush for that. Now that that's all dry and put together, I just popped in the polka dot part in the frame. I hot glued the garden sign in front of the frame. Oh, I think this may be my favorite one today. I pop that right in there and then I'm using the Dollar Tree carrots. We're gonna stuff those right down in there. How cute is that? I love those polka dots in the background. I started out thinking I might wanna put some moss down in there and I did, but I just didn't like it. It was just like too much. So I took it away and I love how this turned out. Isn't it so cute? I cannot wait to put it on my patio. I may also put it on the side of my house underneath the patio, so I might need to add a little hanger, but it is so cute. Don't you love that polka dot fabric? What do you think? And if you're still hanging out with me, today's emoji is the pink tulip. Add it to the comments down below. Thanks! New this year at Dollar Tree is this felt bunny cutout table runner. It is really cute and I'm going to use it to make a beautiful vase. So you'll need a vase from Dollar Tree or anything you have on hand, plus any greenery you like. I picked up this grass from Dollar Tree. Just find the bunny you would like to use on your vase and cut him out. You might need to add the curve to keep its shape. Let's test it out. Ooh, that fits nicely. And once again, I'm using the Ultimate Glue. It sticks to anything and it dries clear, which makes it perfect for this project. I'm just going to paint the glue on the back of the bunny and then press him onto my vase. This worked out so well. At first, I wanted to go all the way around with the bunnies, but I think it was just a little too much, plus what I add in later will make it super high end. You'll see. I just let it dry for about 30 minutes, and it stuck beautifully and totally dries clear. This is the ultimate glue. I also rolled it out to make sure all the little pieces were stuck down. 
I also picked up this yarn craft kit to make some poofy bunnies, but I ended up using one of the pom-poms for a tail. This is totally optional, but I just thought it added a little character to our vase. What would you use on yours? Now it's time to fill it up. You can start off by adding a push light from Dollar Tree, a pillar candle, or some battery operated candles. I had decided to go with some of this beautiful tall grass and these river rocks from Dollar Tree. I think it stepped it up to a high end level and they look beautiful in the vase. And here is how our bunny vase came out. Any extra glue that was white or lingering around completely dried clear, and I love that everything looks flawless. This technique gives me so many other ideas for things to glue to a vase. I am wondering though, Elmer's glue just might work the same, don't you think? Hmm, enjoy crafting this bunny vase today. So cute. And my last project today is called Spring Flowers. And I have had this project in my head for a very long time. So let me kind of explain some of my pieces today. Not everything in this project is from Dollar Tree. Those little wooden um, squares, I, I could never find at Dollar Tree, ever, ever, ever. Everybody's like, oh yeah, pick up the wooden pieces and the wooden plaques and all that. I never find those at Dollar Tree. And I have seven Dollar Trees around me. They must go fast or I don't know. So I ended up purchasing these um, little wooden squares from Amazon. And I will link that below because it came in three sizes. These were the smallest and then a medium sized square and then a bigger square. So I am using some Dollar Tree poster stickers, uh, letter stickers again. And so I'm putting that on the squares and I'm using some Waverly Wax Antique Paint. And I'm very gently putting them on, dabbing them on with my sponge and then wiping it off very carefully. I'm also using some skewers that I got at Dollar Tree and I'm putting on the antique wax there as well. So now that the signs have dried, I'm very carefully pulling off the stickers. Now it did bleed out just a little bit, but I actually like that because it looks more rustic and not, not so perfect. And so this worked out great. You can use this technique for any type of paint. And um, I love it. I just use my little tweezers to pull it all off. And then I'm gonna grab my little sanding block and sort of just give it a nice little once over with all of the pieces. All right, so this piece right here I found at a thrift store years and years ago. I've had it forever. And so it needs a makeover. So I'm gonna be using some Waverly chalk paint in white, and I'm just gonna be putting one coat on there. Now, I know that you may not have a piece like this, but Dollar Tree has those little galvanized cans that you could use. And I'm using a wet towel to sort of, after the paint dries, make sure it's dry. And so I'm wetting the towel and sort of rubbing it over the raised pieces. And that really does give it that antique look. So I hope that you can find something like this to create this project. And so I also used just a little bit of my sandpaper block to finish up the top pieces and I really love how that turned out. So now I'm using my little, little what do you call that, spatula thingy from Dollar Tree and I just use that to cut my foam to put inside and I'm using all kinds of different floral pieces that I did get at Dollar Tree. So just grab whatever floral pieces that you might have around the house. I must say Dollar Tree really has improved with their floral section. They've gotten some really pretty flowers and so um, just add whatever colors goes with your home decor and um, we're just going to add some Spanish moss here at the very end to sort of complete that and kind of make that all pretty down at the bottom.
And now here comes my favorite part is adding the sign. I love how this came out. It is so cute. And sometimes I worry about how I, you know, because I said I had this in my head and I was so worried about, okay, is it going to come out right? Because you have it in your head. You're like, what's it going to be? And it came out better than I thought. I just hot glued the skewers to the back of each letter and then just poke those right down into the floral foam and it came out darling. I love it. Now, I used the pink little tulips you see here, but I also pulled them out that you're gonna see here coming next to sort of give it more of a neutral color. And so which one do you like better? Do you like with the, with the pink tulips or do you like the more neutral color? I think the neutral color looks a little more farmhouse. And so I have this sitting on my mantle right now. I love it. It is just beautiful. And I hope you love it too. In our first project today, it's called the carrot sign. And I'll be using all of these supplies here. What I'm so excited to share with you are these hearts that I purchased at Dollar Tree, and I'm sure you've seen them over in the Crafter Square. And it doesn't have to be Valentine's Day because I usually see these all the time. So we are going to transform these hearts into some carrots. I am so excited I came up with this idea. And so I'm using the Apple Barrel Harvest Orange with a little bit of water, and I'm going to cover them all. I'm just going to be using one coat. So I'm getting those all covered and I didn't paint the back because that's going to be glued down to our sign so we don't need to do the back. So next I'm going to be using the sign that um, is out right now and I took off the little galvanized bunny that was in a previous project that you might have seen so you can go back and see how I used the galvanized bunny. So I'm just going to kind of prep this and get it ready. Um, and sometimes it's kind of warped and so I kind of have to bend it a little bit, but I do love these signs. They're fun to use. So I've got this scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. They're like 25 cents a piece. And this is sort of the white shiplap paper. And so I'm going to be using two pieces because it didn't quite fit the board. So we're gonna match that up and get that glued on with a glue stick. And next, I'm going to be taking off the excess, and I love this technique, is my sandpaper block. It gives it sort of a rustic look to it, and I just love it. It's so easy, and it's kind of fun to do. So now it's all ready to go, and uh, we're just gonna put that to the side. And I'm not gonna cover the back, but you can with some brown butcher paper because it's gonna be mine, I'm keeping this one. And so I'm gonna be using now some of this green grass, it's called Excelsior, but I don't even know what that means. I've never seen that on a package of green grass. So anyway, maybe you know, uh, leave me a comment if you do. So anyway, I'm going to be taking this green grass and I kinda of twist it into a little bunch and I'm just gonna hot glue it all over the top. And then we'll do some trimming. So as I'm hot gluing it on, I kind of pull out any excess pieces that are not sticking down and then we're going to be uh, trimming it. So keep it kind of long on the bottom and you'll see right here in just a second, I'm going to cut off that and then we're going to be wrapping it with some of the jute twine so that you won't be able to see it. So kind of get that all squared away and then kind of bend it up and then cut off all that excess. So that worked out beautifully. And now I'm just gonna take the twine. Now this twine I got at um, Hobby Lobby. It's a little bit thicker. Sometimes I like the thinner twine that's at Dollar Tree. But for this, I'm using the thicker one uh, from Hobby Lobby. So I'm just gonna twist that all the way around 
and um, kind of cover that and it just came out beautifully. I love how this heart becomes a carrot. Now we're just going to add a simple little shoestring bow and this one is complete. So now I'm just going to add a little border to my sign and uh, if some of my teacher friends are watching, um, I used to do this to all of my posters and signs that I would have in my classroom so they might recognize this. I just always would put a border around my signs and things. I've done it all my life. So um, I thought, hey, let's try it on my, my carrot sign. So all I'm doing is just putting a little dot in the corner and then just tracing around that. And then I'm gonna be adding some of these upholstery pins that I got at uh, Walmart that I've had laying around from some other projects. And I'm just snipping off the uh, pointy part and I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue, press that down and I'm gonna use a hammer to sort of um, secure it all the way down in there. I love using these upholstery pins. They really do give a farmhouse sort of rustic feel to your project. And um, I've used them a few other times in some of my other episodes, so check those out when you can. So now I'm using some poster board uh, sticker letters, and you can always find these at Dollar Tree. I don't think I've ever been there when I haven't seen them. And they're over by the posters on the school supply aisle. So grab some of those and uh, we're writing our words for our sign. Oops, I messed up the teeth, but I'll just grab another one. And I am so excited that Dollar Tree has really gotten a lot of different stickers, letter stickers. Um, that has really blown up and there are some really really cute ones like these right here I found these now these were on the crafters square aisle and so I love that it's black around the edges and then white in the center I love it it that's a really pretty font and works perfect on my sign they also have these letters that are rub on if you haven't seen them I was so mad <laughs> for a while because everybody would be showing their rub-on letters and I could never find them. And um, so finally they got them in and you can just use one of the little popsicle sticks, those work great, to sort of rub it off and then you peel off the clear, the clear part and voila, you have these beautiful little decor uh, stickers. So now I'm just finishing up. These are some little tiny letters that work perfect. And I'm just gonna add a few more things and then we're gonna hot glue our uh, carrots down. Oh, before I do, I do grab some of my Mod Podge that's sprayed. I think I cut that out. And I take it outside and just give it a quick dose of some Mod Podge. You can totally use some Mod Podge that you paint on if you wanna seal it up. So now I'm just gonna be hot gluing those right on. Isn't it so cute? I love those little decorative um, floral pieces on there. That really gave it the extra, extra, extra. So here it is all complete. And my little bunny there is so excited to get his 25 cents out for some carrots. So what do you think? I hope you enjoy my carrot sign and find some wooden hearts to turn into carrots today. This is one of my favorite projects today. It's the stove top cover bunny. And I love it because it's so colorful. I'm using some of the stove top covers from Dollar Tree and some of the beautiful wrapping paper they have over in the gift section. So I'm gonna be covering these stove top covers with some wrapping paper. And so find some that you love that kind of go together and match. Uh, and so we're just going to uh, cut that out. And I'm using just some simple 
um, glue stick to glue that on. And I made it just a little bit bigger than what I traced so that I can use my sandpaper block and trim it down. I love that technique. So when you're using the glue stick, make sure that you're really getting on the edge of it. So I'm using my trusty sandpaper block from Dollar Tree to take off all the excess. I love that technique. It's so easy and it's so fun and I love that rough edge look. So my pans are ready and so I needed to attach them together. How was I going to do that? So I decided to get out my tower blocks from Dollar Tree that you get over in the toy section and I'm going to be using one jumbo popsicle stick from Walmart. So I'm going to take the tumbling blocks and just stack them on top of each other. I think I used 12 in all and um, you'll see here how I just put them all together and believe me this makes it super sturdy to keep together and nobody's going to see the back. You see here I used eight of the tumbling blocks, but I end up using some more. And I always love showing my shoebox container from Dollar Tree. It works great to keep all of your tower blocks together. So I ended up using a couple more on there, and so that made it 12 in all. You don't have to use as many as I did, but I just wanted to make sure that it was sturdy enough to hold up, and it certainly was. <laughs> Don't you love it when things just come together perfectly? So now I'm using some bunny ears from Dollar Tree and this is a little headband and I didn't really like that pink stuff on the front so we're going to use the back as the front and it fits perfectly inside of these stovetop covers. I'm so excited. So I ended up hot gluing that inside and you'll see here, learn from me, that I really didn't have to uh, hot glue the whole thing in there. I could have trimmed off some of the headband part, but um, I just use a hot a whole bunch of hot glue in there and really some clips would have been great too to sort of clamp on there and I ended up holding it and it was hot so please beware of that. Um, but it turned out great and held up really great so I'm so thrilled how that turned out. Look how cute they are and so a bunny is not complete without his little tail so these are some little um, pins over in the like stationary section. So I ended up using that as his tail. So I had to cut that off with some wire cutters and it worked perfectly. So I got that hot glued on. Oh, isn't it so cute? And so the last little touch that we're gonna add is a beautiful bow. I love those carrots. I was thinking about putting that on there, but no, I didn't, I didn't like that. So I'm gonna be using that beautiful uh, ribbon again, and I'm making a shoestring bow, and it's gonna go right in the center. And then we'll be finished. It came out beautiful. I did a little ducktail cut on the ends of the bow, and he is ready for display. So my stove top cover bunny turned out adorable. He's so whimsical and I love those ears. They're just so cute. And remember our secret behind the back is those tower blocks that held him together and made him sturdy. Don't tell anybody, it's our little secret. So make sure you check out the wrapping paper and grab some stovetop covers at Dollar Tree and make your little bunny today. 
this next DIY is oh so easy and can be created in so many different ways. I hope this inspires you. First, you'll need any nice vase or jar from Dollar Tree. And then I picked up these beautiful eggs from Walmart, already fixed up with some beautiful fabric and twine. They are nice. And they were um, $3.49 a piece. So as you can see, how I'm starting out is just gluing them side by side all the way around this face. This was so easy to do and notice I am not gluing them to the vase itself, just gluing them egg to egg so I can slip it off when I wanna use the vase for something else. I love that it makes this ring and you can just pop it on and off of your vase. Now this vase already had uh, polka dots on it and I think I picked it up at Hobby Lobby years ago. I'm also using this grass skirt that I had from Dollar Tree last year, I guess, to add inside and you can use some raffia as well. You can use a candle or even these Dollar Tree carrots um, to add in the top. Which way do you like best? I just added a bow, which is totally optional. This gingham orange ribbon is from Dollar Tree and I made a simple bow and glued it to the front. Perfect finishing touch. Now using the same technique, I grabbed these super bright and colorful glitter eggs from um, Walmart. I thought these were super festive. Let's look at how they all turned out. Ooh, I love this orangey sort of neutral-ish egg ring. I think it is stunning and I love that it was already made. I didn't have to wrap those eggs. And I love the carrots too. Those are from Dollar Tree from the plus section. I love it. And then for a brighter look, this egg ring is so festive. If you like the brighter colors of Easter and spring, then this one is for you. Those colors are beautiful. They totally caught my eye when I was shopping. You know, and I think you could even add a ribbon around those eggs and tie it in front. It would hang down, but I just love how these egg rings turned out. Which one is your favorite? And what would you add in your jar or vase? So cute. Okay, board number two is called Spring Flower Sign. And so I'm going to actually use the same technique as I did with the previous DIY, but I'm going to be using some white, just some white apple barrel acrylic paint. And we're going to, once again, just kind of focus towards the center and make it all white. And I got this beautiful metal flower from Dollar Tree. I'm sure you've seen them. They're out all around and I picked up one and I was gonna actually use the welcome sign, but I decided not to. And what we're gonna do is just paint this with three different colors. I'm gonna start out by, I kind of bend the middle ones out just so I can get underneath them, but we're gonna use three different colors. I'm gonna be using some white and some pink, and then we're going to use some antique wax. So I just did one coat of the white and now I'm using this Apple Barrel Pink Polish and I'm just going to kind of wash it over the top. The white wasn't quite dry yet, which was perfect because I got the perfect kind of pink that I wanted. But now that that's dry, although there's some places that aren't dry, but I'm using this uh, Waverly Wax Antique Paint and we're just going to sort of antique it, make it a little rusty, rustic and old. I love that little sponge brush. It works perfectly when you're doing something like this. And so it's just kind of like wherever you feel like you want to put the wax uh, antique paint and just play around with it. Nothing's perfect and it'll come out great just for you. Okay, so now this next part is a little tricky, but not hard. I 
want to write out the word spring using some jute twine. And I got this idea from my friend, and I know that I've mentioned him before. His name is Dave from Dave's Recent Things. He's so awesome, and he made something like this during Valentine's, and he wrote out the word love. So I thought, hey, I'm going to use this and make the word spring come out. So I kind of, and I don't think you can really see it there, but I penciled out the word spring with my with my pencil so I kind of know where I'm going. And it worked out really well. I'm just using my hot glue, hot glue gun, just going slow and uh, doing a little bit at a time. And here's where my tweezers come in handy again. I'm just kind of tapping it together and it just worked out great. I was really a little nervous, but it just, it came out great. I loved it. So now that's complete. I really, really like how it turned out. And the last simple thing is to hot glue our beautiful pink flower onto our sign and we are done. Oh my goodness, I love rustic wood. There are endless ideas of what you can do with them. So what do you think of this one? I think it will be beautiful on the shelf. You could even add a hanger on top and hang it on your back patio. But I just think it's beautiful. You can make your flower any color that you like. So grab some, grab some jute twine and a metal flower from Dollar Tree and create your sign today. And my last project for today, although it's not my last project because we have part two coming soon, it's called the mini bunny pillows. And I'm using a variety of fabric. And so now I'm just gonna make my template. I'm just gonna start out with a circle and just adding some ears. The body is quite easy to do. Just kind of dry it, draw it down. And I'm using some um, poster board from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to kind of bring that down and uh, kind of make it a very easy pattern, straight cut on the bottom, and then kind of flare it out on the sides for the little, for the little feet, pitter patter feet. All right, we're going to get this cut out and that will be our wonderful template to use on our fabric. So the very first bunny, I'm just going to be using my fabric and I need uh, two layers and I'm just going to be drawing around it. Now this first one that I did, I kind of went close to the template and on my other ones, I kind of went around not as close. So I think that that um, will be a little bit better because you're going to be gluing it and you want just a little edge to show like here. I'm going to be adding my glue not at the edge of it and I'm um, just going to kind of glue all of it down. And I'm going to glue all of it except for the very bottom because that's where we'll stuff it. So now that's done and I'm using some stuffing from a Dollar General pillow. I think that that is really the best deal. You get a $2 pillow and it is full of the stuffing. So I think that's a great, great deal. Uh, and so I'm just using a little dowel that I'm going to poke up into the ears. That was just the most difficult area to kind of get up in there. Um, but the rest of it is super easy. And I am just so in love with these little pillows. They turned out so cute. And I can't wait for you to see what I do with them. So now I'm just gonna finish stuffing it. Oops, I had a little hole there. And so I'm finishing stuffing it all up. I love that it's straight across the bottom because it made it super easy to glue together. And um, it just was really full. Glued, uh, put as much in there as I, as I could. So these are all four of them. All of this material I got at Dollar Tree except for the um, ticking fabric. But I just love them but we're not finished yet. So I have these tags that I got at Dollar, no, at Hobby Lobby. Um, I think they were Christmas tags. And so I'm writing all of the names of the characters in Peter Cottontail. So that's Flopsy, Mopsy, 
Cottontail and Peter. And I'm using my little pinking shears for paper. I think they're Fisker scissors. And so I'm going to be using some jute twine for the little ribbon around their neck. And I'll add each name on the ribbon or the jute twine. It looks so cute. Oh, I love this. Last little touch was the button on top of the bow. And so all of them are done. They all have their buttons. They all have their name tags. Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. You could use any fabric that you have around the house. I think these would be really pretty in some floral. And um, all these fabrics I got at Dollar Tree, except for that stripe ticking fabric. But the gray felt, the gray stripe there that is a baby blanket. And I was lucky to find the Buffalo Check fabric too at Dollar Tree. So I am not a sewer and so I love it when I can use hot glue to uh, put some fabric together um, and it just came out beautiful. Uh, oops, I think I see a little fuzz on there. Yep, I better get it off. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed these little bunny family. Make yours today. And there you have part one of my huge Easter Bunny extravaganza. I made a lot of neutral colors today and part two is coming really soon in just a few days. And I think you'll see a little bit more color in my next one, part two. So I hope you're able to find your supplies at Dollar Tree and that you're able to make some of these wonderful projects and that I've inspired you. I want to thank you for subscribing. My next project is called the Washcloth Bunny Family. Now I know you've seen these washcloth bunnies around. If you haven't, then I'm so excited to bring it to you. But they are so easy to make with Dollar Tree products and that's what we're going to do today. I'm giving my bunnies a very farmhouse flair to them. So I'm starting off with this Dollar Tree basket and using some Waverly Wax and Antique and we're going to put that on as the first coat. And then I'm just going to wipe it off a little bit and then we'll add some ivory paint to it. I'm using the dry brush technique, just going over all of it with the ivory paint. I love this, how it comes out very rustic and very beautiful. And this basket would be great to put a real life plant in and perfect for a gift. So Dollar Tree has these beautiful gray washcloths and there's actually two ways to make these little washcloth bunnies. The first one is going from one corner to the other corner all the way across, folding it in half, and then folding it over again. And grab some rubber bands, because you'll need those to hold it all together. Super easy, right? And just fix up the little ears, and there you go. Now we're just going to decorate it. He's super cute already. And the next way to do it is to go one corner, rolling it up all the way to the center, and then stopping there and bringing the other corner into the center. And then you do the exact same thing. You're just gonna fold it in the middle and bring it over. And then secure it with a rubber band on this technique or this way to do it is um, exactly the same way but you kind of have to pull the ears apart because they're kind of laying on top of each other but not a problem at all it's just a preference on how you want it, want it to look so you just kind of have to pull those apart and they're just really darling floppy ears Dollar Tree also has the white hand towels. I think this is called a bar towel. 
And um, I was try thinking, oh gosh, it has to be square, but it, it really doesn't. So I'm just going to be rolling it from one corner all the way across, and it worked great. It makes just a little bit bigger bunny, and this one's going to be the mama bunny. So I just kind of check where my ears, how big I want my ears to be, and that's kind of where you fold it and add the rubber band. So now I'm just using this to get it all secure. If you notice in the front, like in where the face is, uh, when you roll it from one corner all the way over to the next, it does give that separation in the front, but I don't mind it, I, it's fine for me. I've also seen people take eggs and place them in the back in that sort of little scooped out area in the back. And so now here's our family. The mom is the bigger bunny and then I uh, the, the washcloth packs came in two so I made two grays and two white babies. So now I'm using some buffalo check ribbon to tie around it and give it that farmhouse flair. Some of the bunnies I tied with the buffalo check and some I tied with the jute string and then the mom is actually getting both. Next I'm adding some little jute string whiskers and a little tail and so these little whiskers I use the smaller twine I just cut two and then I use another piece to tie around it to secure it which made three whiskers on each side. So that worked out great. So now I have them all ready. I'm not gonna put eyes on them. Um, I'm just gonna be using buttons for the little nose. I love that little uh, organizer that I got at Dollar Tree as well. It's perfect for all my little buttons. So now I'm just gonna hot glue that right on top. And isn't it so cute? I love this. <laughs> Oh yeah, here comes the little tail. I had some pom-poms. I used white for the gray bunny and then a black um, pom-pom for the white bunnies. So now I've got my moss and I'm going to cut all that out and get it ready. Now this is a rather small basket so all the bunnies that I made are not going to fit in there. So um, the first one I'm just going to kind of show you that it's the mom and a couple of the, the babies. But I kind of stop for a minute because I'm like, I need something more with this. So I'm using these party hats from Dollar Tree and I'm taking it apart and sort of rolling it a little bit tighter. You know, it makes the perfect carrot. So I'm just gonna secure that with some hot glue and I'm going to use some of this um, fabric that I've used in a previous video. It's some fabric that I had it's called farmhouse ticking fabric and so I'm going to make two da, 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 da. that's kind of a disco color I thought that was so funny it's that color of that party hat it's so disco so anyway I'm hot gluing this fabric around and we're gonna get that all secure I'm using one of the styrofoam smaller balls from Dollar Tree and we're gonna stick that on the top to give it a round edge at the top know if you noticed there but uh, I did burn my finger and then I have a little burn from another one even though my setting is on low setting um, it still kind of can burn you if you do it right away huh anyway so I did my other carrot in some burlap fabric that I had and then I'm just going to put some greenery on the top I also secure some um, it's a really dark gray cording that's going around the top and um, just like that and I had that from uh, I believe Dollar General has that so I just added that to um, make it really pretty and so I'm just going to be adding this into the basket with the mom I also have a pan that I've had for a while it's a galvanized sort of can and it was perfect for the little babies and then they'll get a carrot to munch on as well. 
So this is perfect to add in your bathroom to give as a gift. I think this would be really cute to give to one of your crafter friends that needs um, old towels and things to wipe up paint and all that kind of stuff. So this would be cute to give as a little crafting gift, I thought about that because I'm always using towels to wipe up messes. But it turned out so cute. I love these and like I said, these have been done uh, for a long time, but I just have never made some. So I thought it would be perfect for my bunny extravaganza. So what do you think? Grab some washcloths at Dollar Tree and make yours today. And our very first project today, kicking off this extravaganza, is my giant bunny head frame. Now I did something like this previously, and it was in my Valentine's episode. And I'm gonna leave the link up above there so you can see how I did this. And it's the same kind of fabric or, you know, material that the um, giant bunny head is. It's that really thick felt. And I kind of struggled with this the first time that I did it with the heart. So I kind of knew what I was getting myself into, but I really liked how the heart turned out. And I was hoping that my bunny would too. So it is, you have to do a couple of um, steps on this to get the paint because it just soaks up all of the paint. So my very first step is I use some ivory chalk paint and with a sponge and I'm just going over all of it. It looks like, oh yeah, it's covering. But after it dries for a while, it starts to sink in and then the blue starts coming out. So I let it sit for about 30 minutes. And as you can see here, it's the blue is starting to come through again. So what I did is take some spray paint and I'm using that, I take it outside and I'm gonna give it two coats. And that really helps. And while that's out drying, I'm gonna take this 18 by 11, 11 by 18 frame from Dollar Tree. And I love this green color, it's the moss color in the chalk paint and I'm going to give it two coats. Now this is kind of funny because you notice my mat is the polka dots and this is some paper from Dollar Tree and as I was working with the bunny I'm like I really like the background so I cut this out and I'm going to glue it to the glass of the frame and I'm going to put the paper right on top and uh, get that glued on. So that'll be the background of the bunny. I laugh so hard because I'm like, I really like that. So I smooth that out and you'll see here in just a minute, like before your eyes, it starts to sort of wrinkle up and I probably wouldn't have used it, but since the bunny is so big, I uh, it covers it. So it was okay. So I didn't have to, to redo it. But I'm putting it all together now. And you see, notice the bunny, how white it is. I actually, the spray paint worked, but I actually went over it just a little bit with some acrylic white paint and that totally did it. So now I am hot gluing it onto the frame. Looks like it's the frame has no back, but it's my mat. It's so funny. I cracked up on that. Cause I love that, that um, polka dot and um, wrapping paper. It's really cute. So now I'm gonna make a little nose out of this, I guess it's kind of like a chenille uh, yarn that I got at Dollar Tree. I was really excited to see it. And I just make a little um, little pom-pom and I cut it off. And then I'm using the wired sort of um, twine. I love this. And you can kind of make it go whichever way you want. So that's gonna be our little whiskers. So I just twist those together, glue it on, and then I add the little pink nose. Well, it looks like we're off to a good start with my extravaganza because this first project was a success. I love the texture that this felt gives after painting it. I know it does take a few coats. I use chalk paint and spray paint and acrylic paint, but it really does come out great. 
and I just love how happy and cute and I love the jute twine that I used with that wire in it. It's perfect for whiskers. I think number five will blow you away with how easy it is to create. First, you will start out with this famous new bunny from Walmart. He is a little out of my price range at $9.98, yikes! But I did want to give him a try and I also knew I wanted to keep him forever. But I did want to change it up a little. So I started out with this chocolate brown spray paint and I gave him two coats. And this is how the paint turned out. Wow, what a difference. It just makes you want to take a bite right out of him. But whenever I took off the original bow, it did leave this gaping hole, but no worries. I just replaced it with this beautiful polka dot ribbon from Dollar Tree. I think it went just perfectly. And right before your eyes, we have created a gorgeous faux chocolate bunny. How beautiful is this? I was a little worried about how it would take that spray paint and I almost painted it with chalk paint. Maybe you can try that. But I think it is a winner and it came out better than I thought. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope I have inspired you to get ready for spring and create some of these fun projects today. As always, I appreciate you all and I appreciate your kind comments. More spring hacks and DIYs coming in just a few days. See you next time on Susie's Stuff. Bye everybody.